have a question regarding modesty. Several episodes ago, Charles answered a question about modesty in swimwear. I'd like to hear his thoughts on women's attire in general. Many church leaders have spoken about modesty in the past. St. Padre Pio, as I'm sure you are aware, had very strict rules of modesty for women entering the confessional. Another example is the following quote. Standards of modesty in dress, imprimatur, dated September 24, 1956. Quote, a dress cannot be called decent, which is cut deeper than two fingers breadth under the pit of the throat which does not cover the arms at least to the elbows and scarcely reaches a bit beyond the knees. Furthermore, dresses of transparent materials are improper, end quote, uh, by the Cardinal Vicar of Pius XI. Hmm. Should we be following these strict rules of modesty or are they antiquated ideals that need not be followed? And I'm particularly, uh, I'd particularly like to hear your thoughts on whether or not women should wear pants. Well, um, there's certainly good ideals. Uh, I think the the the, uh, the better choice, shall we say? What, I don't. I what's the better choice? Uh, the uh, the bit about you know the throat and the elbows and so on. Uh, but having said that, I think part of the problem is that when you talk about modesty and dress, a lot of women immediately expect that you want them to dress like Amish nuns. Mm. You know, which uh, I think it, there, there are at least a couple of organizations out there on the World Wide Web that are uh, producing fashions for women that are modest and yet very lovely and feminine. Yeah. And, you know, that's where a woman looks her best, and why shouldn't she? What's wrong with a woman looking really good Yeah. and really modest? It can be done. Uh... As far as the, the uh, other issue of pants, well, personally speaking, I don't like seeing women in trousers. Yeah. I just don't. Call me old-fashioned. But again, they don't look their best. We just don't. Uh, and mind you, the same is true of men. You know, we, we don't look our best anymore either. Everybody rag bags around. Yeah. There's a um, very funny uh, uh, picture that's making the rounds of this 1950s scene. And they're looking through a prism into the present and seeing us fat and stupid and half, half naked. Yeah. And you see the looks of horror on their faces. Yeah. Uh, and that's an important corrective. You know, my brother just sent me a uh, video of New York in 1911. And it's, it's on, the, on the, the streets of basically what's a slum. Mm -hmm. And everybody's trying to dress as well as they possibly can. Why can't we do that? It's not like we're poorer than they were. Um, I don't know why. I, I mean, when I, when I was little, uh, it was already, of course, going this way. But the world looked like madmen. Yeah. That's what I remember. And I remember seeing it change. And I hated it. Um, I hate it now. You know? Uh, they say that you can't tell a book by its cover and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's another old saying. Clothes make the man. Yeah. If you dress the pot, you will become the pot. If you dress well in a becoming manner, it will improve who you are. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, you remember when we used to do these, when we started out, and you were in that uh, wife beater, and the Hawaiian shorts and the sandals. Yeah. And that stupid straw hat from Puerto Vallarta or Acapulco, wherever you got it. Yeah. Uh, that just looked horrible. I felt comfortable, though. I dressed I'm, for comfort. Well, I'm sure you do. Uh, but I think it looked terrible. That's why you can't find the first 30 episodes of the show. Well, yeah, you can. No, they were purged. <laughs> the, uh, the, oh, the, the real first one. The real first, yeah. Got it. I mean, not the one that says one. That was when you started dressing like this. Yeah. But the, the first 20 or 30, however many it was, you were sitting there in this sort of weird uh, tourist from hell get up. 
I mean, you know, pina colada on one side. Da, da, da. I, I, I've never said this to you publicly, but I really appreciate the change in your image. Thank you, Charles. I mean, this whole, I'd be a beach boy if I were only 50 years younger uh, or older or whatever. You know, no, no. <sighs> okay. Um, well, a couple comments. You know, I, I didn't used to be comfortable uh, speaking for modesty of men in dressing up. Um, encourage men to wear suits more often. And I think part of the thing is doing it more frequently. And eventually you develop comfort, and eventually I think a suit will actually give you confidence no. compared to dressing casually. I, a suit can give you confidence. Well, you, you, you certainly feel, especially everyone else ragbagging around, you feel 10 feet tall. Yeah, I do. I like uh, sometimes when we have to go shopping after, uh, um, like, you know, we're, we're throwing a party, and like after mass, I'm still in the suit, and you go to the market, and... I don't know. It feels good. Well, it kind of feels good. Well, and people will say to you, uh, why are you all dressed up? And my usual answer to that was, if it's a, a woman, uh, I knew you'd be here. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. And by the, oh, by the way, along those lines, if you have to say, I hope I'm not creeping you out, too yeah. late. Yeah, too late. It happened. But seriously, ladies and gentlemen, uh, clothes make the man or the woman. I, I remember years ago, I was at a party. And we were running, uh, I, I won't tell you where it was, but it was up Beachwood Canyon. And we were running low on food and booze. So my hostess and myself went off to the Beachwood Market to pick up more supplies. We saw this gorgeous old lady dolled up to the nines. And I mean, age appropriate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Not trying to look young. Yeah. But I mean, she had the jewelry, she had the furs, her hair was just so, I mean, she, she looked like somebody you'd want to have as your grandmother, you know? And she was pushing a shopping cart. And in the shopping cart, all there were were cans of dog food and bottles of scotch. Lots of both and nothing else. And so my friend says to me, what do you think that means? And I said, it's easier to keep down when it's marinated. Gosh. But the point I'm making is that regardless of whether or not uh, she was using it for herself or Fido had a little drinking problem, yeah. <laughs> Whichever it was, uh, you know, this was a lady who was feeling good. Yeah. And, and she certainly looked it. Um, the other thing, too, you've got to ask yourself. We all, even now, I mean, not for mass, which is unimportant, of course, because no one, no one of any great importance is going to show up at the consecration. Of course not. But for job interviews, we still tend to dress up. That's true. Be what we value, what's really important. Yeah, what's, what's important, what yeah. really matters, yeah. we dress up for. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, what if you dressed as though every day was worthwhile? It's very Groundhog Day. Uh, yeah, or Happy Death Day, if you prefer. Happy Death Day? <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, funny thing, I always wear a suit at school. Yeah. And so the kids asked my nephew, Albert, who came over to visit me, if uh, I was the same way at home. And he said, well, I've only once seen my uncle without a tie on. He took it off because we asked him to. I said, well, what was that like? He says, oh, his head started bouncing across the floor. And I said, that's creepy. And he said, that wasn't the creepy part. The creepy part was that uncle kept laughing and smiling as he was bouncing. <laughs> wow. Well, that was what Albert said. I don't recall the thing having happened that way. But I don't remember it happening at all. But seriously, uh, you know, Modesty and dress is all connected up with self-respect. Present the best image you can in front of the world. Yeah. That's important. Um, and you might set a trend, you know. If you dress well, other people may want to. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, one small caveat, too, because this question made me think of St. Francis de Sales, um, Finding God's Will for You, where he's talking about... Um, Commandments and counsels, they're two different things. Not following a commandment is punished by sin. Not fo following a counsel uh, is not punished by sin. And what's a counsel? A counsel is an opportunity to engage in virtue, in charity, or something like that. Um, so, it's not that, so when we're talking about the rules and adhering to the rules, it's not like, in my opinion, it's not like, oh, if you don't follow this, then you're sinning. 
I think if you follow that, that's a counsel, and you're practicing the counsel of modesty, and that's that's a high, yeah. Uh, and and mind mind you, mind you, uh, I find it best to attack others for things that I'm not very good at. So in other words, if I was a very poor dresser, I would attack others for a modesty. Yeah. Definitely. I'd, I'd feel better about myself. Definitely. Lead a crusade against these sinners. Absolutely. <laughs> Lead a crusade. <laughs> but remember, it's got to be sins that you yourself partake in. Because that, that, without hypocrisy, you just don't have anything going on. That's a great lie. Let's lead a crusade against it's these a, sitters. Yeah. Yeah. We'll show them who's boss. I like that. Okay.